Hey everybody, welcome back to the Risky Channel. I'm Riley and today I'm gonna to put foot straps in my Yamaha Superjet. Basically, you just wanna figure out where do you want the foot strap and then how are we gonna put it in? Most people use inserts that drill holes into your tray and the downside of that is you can get water inside your tray. Your ski gets really heavy and waterlogged. We've decided to use these adhesive studs and we just cut one in so that we can nest them together close enough to match the spacing of our Dekine foot strap. In the past, we've just cut fiberglass by hand to fit around the studs and hold everything down. But our buddy Jared laser cut these, it's gonna be awesome. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your tray is all cleaned out and then we sand it. We just use sander like this and then we clean it with like mineral spirits. The next thing we do is we get the epoxy ready and then we get these out to fiberglass and epoxy everything down. To make sure the spacing is right to fit the foot strap, we just designed and 3D printed this little fixture that holds these at the right distance apart. And then we figure out where we want that in the ski and then we'll mark everything and epoxy and glass it in place. Now that we've got everything located and marked, we just wanna take these stainless steel inserts and grind the bottom of them with a really rough grinding wheel to make sure they have a good grip when the epoxy dries. The next step is to dry fit your fiberglass pieces. And these are laser cut and they have the holes in them and everything, really nice. On this side, of course, we had to cut to make sure it fits. But what we do is we use the smallest ones first and then the slightly bigger ones all the way up to the largest one. And then when we epoxy this, we'll do each one individually, making sure there's no air bubbles or anything. We're gonna go with two ounces of resin and one ounce of hardener. First step is to get the surface wet with epoxy. Now we gotta get the bottoms of the studs nice and wet. Now, as Riley mentioned, we're gonna be starting small and going big. So you lay your first sheet down. That sheet will start to grab. Once that first one's saturated, you go to number two. You're trying to get out any air voids because air does not help the mechanical strength. Lay that third one on. I do want to kind of wet out this surface too over here because this is going to start curing up, you know? We want to be able to ideally use all this epoxy. Is that the fourth one? Yeah. Awesome. Put the small one on here. Yep. As long as you get the epoxy to touch the mat, you can kind of work around to other places while it really fills in the mat better. Okay, if you want to do number two on that. After we're done laying all this fiberglass too, we're going to follow up with that jig to make sure that we're nice and in the right spot where we want to be in. You want to make sure that glass is nice and saturated. Fiberglass by itself is not very strong. It's gonna work. Yeah. I'd say it's on the money. 10 years later. All right, the epoxy is dry on the foot strap studs. Everything is nice and tight, and you can see this area of fiberglass is gonna spread that load nicely when I'm pulling on this with my foot. And a little mock-up here, I used the 25 millimeter pad with turf. It's gonna cover that stud completely. 
and then it's gonna have a nut on the top to hold the foot strap in. And you don't really have any threat of getting hurt by this because it's all padded and protected. So let's get the new turf cut ready. I'm gonna sand this first, and get that glued in, and we're gonna finish this up. We just finished shaping the undermat and adding the kicktail underneath. So everything fits just the way that I want. We kind of put like a big chamfer here so that when we tuck the turf down, the water will be able to exit easily. And my foot strap will go right here. We've got the pad ready with the turf on it and we're gonna glue it in. To glue down the turf, we use Weldwood contact cement. You can get it at any place like Home Depot. You really have to make sure to read the directions on the can. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes for this stuff to set up and get tacky. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they paint it on everything and then they just stick it together and try to get it to stick. It will not work like that. You have to give it the time to get tacky before you assemble everything. Okay, we've got the glue ready. Jessica's gonna help me with an extra set of hands here. We just wanna make sure that the glued surfaces don't touch each other until we're in the perfect position. Just like if you're putting a screen protector on your phone, you have to make sure it's lined up before you let it touch. Now we've got the front in place where everything looks good on the front and then we work our way towards the back. So then the tricky part of this is to get this wrapped around here and also get this kind of wrapped in so there's no big wrinkle. Like if you did it like this, you'd kind of have a big mess. Sometimes you use a heat gun and kind of get it to flex the turf a little bit and make sure there's no wrinkles or anything and that'll be all glued down at the end. Right now I'm almost ready to put in the foot strap. I'm just pushing down on the studs so I can basically feel them and then I cut around them with an X-Acto knife and then we'll be able to bolt in the foot strap. I've got the Dukine foot strap in now. I got up in the tray, everything feels really good. And I just wanna thank you guys for checking out this video and catch you in the next one, later. <laughs>